Greetings from the Apocalypse. So I thought today we would talk a little bit about solder because sometimes people kind of take solder for granted and to know a little more about it and how it works and all that kind of thing can only help you in your process. So we're gonna go through and I'm also gonna show you what I think the, e you know, the easiest forms are to use and what to use for what, basically. So right off the bat, we color code our solder at Jewelry Arts. Uh, there's lots of different methods. You can like scratch the little markings in them. You can bend them differently. Um, I think keeping them in separate bags is actually the worst method because invariably you get a hole in your bag, they, they fall out and you're like, I don't know what the fuck I got here. And you really can't use solder when you don't know what it is. That's problematic. So that's what we do. We get sheet solder, we mill it as thin as we possibly can, and then we color code it. And we make this convenient chart so that you can tell what's what. So the IT stands for intense temperature. That is a solder that you only use with fine silver because it melts at a pretty high melting point. And if you use it on sterling, there is a decent possibility that you could melt your piece. So you're not gonna be using it on sterling. We use it on fine silver. A lot of enamelists like to use it, you know, because again, high melting point, et cetera, et cetera. So that would be your first one, IT, highest melting. Then you go down to the hard, which as you can see, red, color-coded, I'm telling you, it's the way to go. Now, hard is the solder generally that you start with when you're working in sterling. You know what I mean? If there's sterling on your piece, you have to, you know, the highest melting one you can use is hard, okay? Then you go down to the medium, which is the blue. Uh, medium tends to be the most cooperative solder. You know what I mean? Like you can make it sit up and beg and you know, just do whatever you want. So if I have a situation where I'm only gonna be doing like one solder seam on a piece, I'm always gonna go to medium. Do you know what I mean? Like that's just like your go-to. Or if I need to do multiple uh, soldering operations with the same solder because you know, you, you, you have more than two or three steps in it, I'm gonna use medium again and again and again. That's like the nicest one. Then we go down to easy, which is the green. So a lot of people, especially in the beginning, they're like, I'll use easy. It's right in the name. Guess what? No. It does melt at the lowest temperature of all the solders, but that does not mean that it is easy. Because basically, if you think about what solder is, like what is solder? Solder is a, any metal that'll melt at a lower temperature than the, the, than the metal of the bits that you're putting together. Oh. sign malfunction. So in silver, you take silver and they add things to it like copper and whatever to make it melt at a lower temperature. And that's how they formulate all the solder. Same thing with gold. They take gold, they add metals that melt at a lower melting point. Um, then that's how you get like, you know, 22 carat solder and 20 carat solder and 18 and 14 and et cetera, et cetera. So if you think about it, the more stuff they add to it to make it melt at a lower temperature, the more opportunity there is for things to get a little funky. And basically, that's what happens with Easy. They add more zinc to it, and zinc is one of those metals that you'll notice also that the Easy, when it melts, it's a little more yellowy looking, so the color is not so um, delightful. And because it has an additional zinc in it, it's not super controllable. Like, it's not that it's hard to melt, but to get it to melt like where you want it and to go where you want it to go. Um, and I'm, I pretty much feel like I can make some, you know, solder sit up and beg if I want to. And easy is just like, not cooperative. So I have to say, I almost never use easy. I always um, find another way around. So that's not to say like never use easy, you can't use easy. But a lot of people think like, oh, I'll use easy. That'll make it easier. You would think that would make sense, right? But in real life, medium is usually a better choice. So just keep that in mind when you're making your decisions. Now, the reason that we like sheet solder, because it comes in a couple forms, right? You can get sheet solder, you can get wire solder, you can also get the, uh, the solder, like the paste with the, uh, with the little bits of solder in there. Uh, I do not like the paste solder at all. I think it is a tremendous mess because basically you have flux and a whole bunch of tiny little bits of solder, right? So every place you put that on your piece has solder. Now, if you're doing like maybe some filigree or something like that, that might be great. You know what I mean? Like you smear it across there, it melts, like all good. But in most other scenarios, I do not want solder everywhere my flux is. 
like that's going to leave it with a disgusting mess that I don't want. So I like pretty much never use paste solder except for in very rare occasions. Again, you may have a scenario where that like works great and you know, party on and enjoy that. But I'm just saying like, it's something that I don't even think I have any in the studio. Um, and there's also wire solder. Now, is there anything wrong with wire solder? No, there's not, but it's very hard to get very small pieces of wire solder. Even when you cut them tiny, it's still like a pretty significant chunk of solder. So what I find is that for a lot of things, you just end up with a solder lump. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just too much and it's hard to get a small amount of it. Now granted, if you get wire solder, you could always run it through the mill uh, to make it thin and which is basically then like sheet solder. Um, so like if you work on really big pieces, vessels where you actually need uh, enormous amounts of solder, then wire solder may be fine. But I think the best way to get it is in sheet because you mill them very, very thin and I can cut big pieces, I can cut very small pieces. And you know, a real big key to uh, cutting down on cleanup, which as you know is my mantra in life, is to not use too much solder in the first place. So for me, that's what we do. We take our solder, we, we mill it nice and thin, like as thin as it'll go on the mill, and then we just take a big magic marker and we color them in. Uh, another big advantage to this, like let's say you cut a piece and it lands on the bench. If you've scratched a mark in there, there's no way you're gonna be able to read that on a little piece of solder. One of these babies falls on the bench, like if it's black, on one side, I know it's IT. If it's red, I know it's hard. I just think of all the methods I've seen and tried and whatever, this is the easiest to deal with. So just remember the general principles of soldering, which are you start at the beginning of the piece with the highest melting solder that your piece will tolerate, and then you work your way down in subsequent steps. Now there's definitely things we do along the way to use the same solder repeatedly. And usually, unless they're like right next to each other, it's not a problem. Uh, you can also use things to um, retard the solder flow, like um, ochre, which is a clay-based soil, which is dirt. Uh, we also make something here called nochre, which is pink and a little easier to clean up because ochre definitely can get messy and you have to be so careful when you use it that you don't get it anywhere you don't want or else none of your stuff will flow, which will make you very sad. So. I will definitely talk about more specific instances with particular projects, you know, as we go along in these videos, but I just thought we should just sort of like take a moment and be like, okay, what is solder? How do you decide what to use? And you know, what's the easiest form to get it in? So hopefully I've covered all those things. Uh, if you have any questions that I haven't covered, please ask about them in the comments and I'll get right back to you. That's all for today.